Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is Oregon and their online hospital capacity coordination. Now this comes from a recent academic journal article that I will actually leave a link to in the show notes and it literally just came out. So this is the middle of June 2020 and this is fantastic as it relates to coronavirus. So they created in the state of Oregon an online hospital capacity coordination system. Why did they do this? To address siloed resource allocation. Okay, that's sort of a fancy term for, as it relates to coronavirus, preventing what happened in Italy with rationing of ventilators and ICU beds. In other words, siloed resources. In other words, if one hospital was totally full and all their ICU beds were full and all their ventilators were full and somebody new came in with respiratory failure and needing a ventilator because of coronavirus, like they might die because that hospital was full and all their ventilators were used. But the point is, there were other close by hospitals that potentially had beds and ICU beds and ventilators so that if you could either transfer that patient or make sure the patient was never taken to the full hospital in the first place, that they would live. So literally, coordinating hospital resources is a matter of life and death, right? So, genius, right? Oregon is the first and only state in America to do this. Now, so what I've drawn here is an illustration of what I just said, right? Hospital 1 might be 100% full, Hospital 2 might be 50% full, and Hospital 3 might be 90% full. So what you want to do is, is if there's somebody who's in critical condition, you move them to hospital in the middle, not hospital on either end, okay? Now, it's a little bit more complicated than that because in addition to ICU beds and ventilators, there's also something called ECMO, which is where you can actually oxygenate people's blood without any use of their lungs at all. It's a very complicated machine. There's not very many of them, so you would want to know who has available ECMO so that if a patient needs ECMO, you'd move them there. Next up, not only do you have to do this for adults, you can think of this like, as like the adult beds, but then for the pediatric beds as well. Right? Because if you've got a, a, a place that's 100% full of its pediatric beds and you've got a kid that's in trouble and all you have is adult beds, well then that's a problem. Likewise for OBGYN and obstetrics as well. Now, how did Oregon do this? They did this through Oregon Health Sciences University, which is the large academic medical center in the state of Oregon. It's, it has the medical school residency, et cetera, et cetera. Now, it is the only one in Oregon. Oregon only has one medical school slash academic medical center. Now, OHSU, not only did they coordinate all this, they paid for it through their OHSU charitable foundation. So isn't that interesting that it wasn't through the government, it wasn't through the individual hospitals chipping in, a charitable foundation had to step up and do this. Okay, now, that brings up the point that capacity coordination is a public health good. The market, the free market within healthcare did not create this. It didn't exist anywhere in America until a few weeks ago. And now it exists in America in only one state. So this is a quote unquote failure of the free market. Why? Because coordinating bed capacity across hospitals is a public good. It's like the fire department. Why? Because it doesn't. you don't need to coordinate this stuff all the time, so it's kind of rare, kind of like fires. And then two, you never know who's going to benefit from it, right? Who's going to have a fire? Who's not going to have a fire? You don't know. Who's going to need this coordination? Who's going to not gonna need this coordination? You don't know. What does that mean? It means it's a public good, right? Not everything in healthcare can be solved by the marketplace. Not everything in healthcare has to be run by the government. But here is a clear, we don't have arguments in America as to whether or not the fire department should be privatized or run by the government. Like that argument's kind of over. So the point is, is that for some things in healthcare, not all of healthcare, but for some things, they're public goods, okay? Allocation of beds across hospital systems and coordinating that, I would argue, is a public good. Okay, next up, who did this? They hired GE to do this. Why did they hire GE to do this? Because GE has expertise in creating command centers um, within hospitals, and I've made a previous video about this, and I'll leave a link to it in the show notes. Now, this is essentially a GE command center across hospitals. So literally, there's like a dashboard that shows like how many you know various beds and ventilators are available. It's awesome. 
I encourage you to go to the uh, article so you can actually see the screenshots of this dashboard. Now, at the end of the day, not all, the vast majority of hospitals in America don't even have this at the individual hospital level. They have no centralized command center to know where the patients are and what's full and what's not full, et cetera, et cetera. So they don't even have it at the individual hospital level. And until recently, nobody had it at the state level. So this is a huge deficiency and blind spot which coronavirus has brought to bear within the U.S. healthcare system. Now, isn't this interesting? The idea to initial functioning of this command center across in the state of Oregon was only 14 days from, hey, I got an idea, to it actually working was two weeks. And then it was fully functional for 87% of the beds in the entire state of Oregon within four weeks. That's incredibly fast, okay? What's my point of bringing that up? Healthcare is not complicated, okay? If doing this command center bed coordination was complicated, it would have taken much longer than four weeks to do this, okay? Landing a rocket on a boat in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, that's complicated, okay? What SpaceX does is complicated, okay? Coordinating beds across hospitals, not that complicated. So it wasn't an issue of being quote unquote complicated, it was an issue of the incentives. There was no incentives for those hospitals to do this ever before, right? And they didn't want to spend the money on it, and they didn't want to spend the time on it. And what's another name for incentives? It's caring. The hospitals didn't care enough to do this. So my point for today is anytime you hear that healthcare is complicated, maybe that's really just a euphemism for people just have not prioritized fixing said problem within healthcare. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.